Rock. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all around the world. All the millions of D Wood and Sam Shamoon fans watching all over the planet. We have invited, we've invited all our Muslim friends to defend their prophet. And we, we're always glad to give them an opportunity to defend their prophet. One thing I've, well, I've actually noticed two things, Sam. One, I've noticed that lots of Muslims come on before we go live and they start yeah. defending all their points <laughs> until we actually go live and then they don't want to defend them anymore. I've noticed that. And two, I've noticed that whenever we say, have you noticed this, Sam? Whenever we say, here's the topic, we're going to address whatever we say. If we say, guys, we're going to uh, take all objections to the deity of Christ. Muslims will, yeah. in the chat, will change the subject. If we say, yeah. we'll take all objections to the yeah. Trinity, <clears throat> Muslims in the, in the chat will change the subject. Uh, if we say, hey, we're going to talk about this issue and allow you to show that Islam is true, Muslims in the chat will change the subject. It's, it's, almost, like, it's almost like they don't ever want you to dig deep and get to the truth about any topic whatsoever. And I don't know about you, but I, I cannot trust a, a religion or an yeah. ideology that doesn't want to get to the truth about anything. What, do you, what well, are your thoughts on all this, Sam? Yeah, absolutely. Look what the title is. <clears throat> it's Muhammad and the Bible, already in the comment section. What I saw is a Muslim raising Mark 10, 18, about Jesus being separate from God because Jesus denied his goodness. Now, I don't know, <laughs> is it? <clears throat> here's what I want to understand. I know that Wait, Muhammad was... Hold on, hold on, hold on, Sam. Yeah, yeah. I just said it. I just said it, right? I said, hey, we got a topic. Let's talk about the deity of Christ. And then they're going to want us to expose... <laughs> They're ridiculous objections to the deity of Christ. But when we do a show on the deity of Christ, they want us to talk about Muhammad and Aisha, right? It doesn't matter what we, it doesn't matter what topic we say we want to address. They want us to go to a different topic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> you have the title, Muhammad in the Bible, Prove It Live. It's not like the title isn't clear what the topic is going to be. So I'm really wondering, and people may think I'm mocking them, because Muhammad was illiterate, so they claim, do you think apart from the demonization, until Jesus Christ sets them free by the power of his Holy Spirit. Do you think it's deliberate that they want to be illiterate like Muhammad so that they try hard not to understand what they read because they think being illiterate is virtuous because Muhammad, who is a pattern of conduct for them to emulate, was illiterate? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe you can help me understand logic. Uh, yeah, I just think it's, I mean, Guys, if you, I know there are atheists who watch. This should, this should make you think that there is a spiritual dimension because I just, I don't believe that people can just naturally be this dumb. I mean, when, when, when Sam, <laughs> when, when I see a live stream topic, right? When yeah. I see a live stream topic, I'm either interested in that topic or I'm not interested in that topic. If I'm not interested in the topic, I don't watch the live stream. I don't go to it. Yeah. If I'm interested, I go to the live stream and I'm, and I'm happy to go with the topic. For some reason, for some reason, there are always Muslims who say, um, whatever the topic, we're going to change the topic, and that's why we're yeah. going. We're going to the live stream not to participate oh, in boy. the topic, but to distract from the topic. Anyway, we got all that out of the way. Um, yes. We're still on time, but we have from Killa Khan. We have our first argument here. All right. I mean, the first one that I saw. I just scrolled through real quick, looking for um, a defense. Um, guys, can we confirm? Killa Khan, can you confirm that you're actually a Muslim? I'm, I'm, I'm only saying that because sometimes we have people who don't really believe the argument they're putting forward. They just say it to get us to respond to it. And we're happy We're happy to do that. We're happy to do that because lots of people do that because they want to hear a response to things. Yeah. But uh, we did invite Muslims. We invited Muslims specifically to this live stream to show us where the Quran affirms that... Uh, I mean, where, where the Bible affirms Muhammad as a prophet, because the Quran affirms that the Bible, the Bible does say that. In fact, Sam, let me go ahead and read the verse for us. Uh, sure. Right. Go ahead and read, read as, you're bringing, as you're bringing up those verses, I just want to give you a praise report. Zina Khalifa, she goes, I used to be a Muslim and became Christian because the Quran unknowing deifies Jesus. And Surah 4171, glory to God. So mm -hmm. you have another precious Muslim who left Islam for Jesus Christ. Her name is Zina Khalifa. Welcome to the family of God. May the Lord Jesus preserve you and all of us. For the glory of Jesus Christ. All right, go ahead. Amen. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna look at the Quran. This this will probably be the only time we're looking at the Quran this evening, as far as I know, uh, unless something else comes up. But just so everyone knows why we're saying this, um, here you have 
the Quran. These are just different translations of Surah 7, verse 157, but uh, they're fine. Uh, so pick all here. Uh, Surah 7, verse 157, those who follow the messenger, the prophet who can neither read nor write, whom they will find described in the Torah and the gospel, which are with them. So that's that's the Pikthal. You have Hilleli Khan, those who follow the messenger, the prophet who can neither read nor write, uh, Muhammad, whom they find written with them in the Torah and the Injil, the gospel. And notice Hilleli Khan even adds some references there that are, uh, we can only assume that those are the absolute best that Muslims have, right? Um, yep. Obviously, if you're only going to put one verse from the Torah and one verse from the gospel, you're going to go with your best. And the ones uh, they went with were um, uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. You could also go to verse 18 of the same chapter. A lot of Muslims use that. And from the gospel, John chapter 14, verse 16. So we can assume that those are the best. And uh, if you guys would like us to address those, we're happy to go through them. Uh, then you have uh, M.H. Shakir, those who follow the apostle prophet, the Ummi, whom they find written down with them in the Torah. That's the Torah and the Injil. So the Quran here is claiming that Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah, in both the Torah and the gospel. So not one or the other, both the Torah and the gospel. And notice it's not some some original Torah and gospel, which we don't have anymore. It's He's talking about the Torah and the gospel, which are with them. So the Torah and the gospel that are still around, that still exist. And this is why Muslims um, down through history have tried to defend the claim that Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. All right, Sam. So Yes, sir. Uh, before we launch into our before we launch into our first example here, which looks like it's yes. coming from Song of Solomon. Uh oh. Yeah. Guys, did, uh, did 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 <laughs> did Killa Khan confirm that that he's a Muslim or is he just someone who's uh, playing around? Because again, uh, again, we're happy to go through any examples that people want to give them through, but we want to give special uh, special preference to Muslims who are actually putting forward arguments so that. Um, so that we can give them time. But Sam, uh, what, what are your thoughts on this whole, uh, the problem that Muhammad has gotten himself into by appealing to our scriptures to confirm yeah, his yeah, prophethood? Yeah. yeah, and again, let's invoke the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ to bless us by the power of the Holy Spirit to fill us, Father, to glorify Jesus Christ and expose Islam so Muslims get saved and Jesus is exalted. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Bless this session in Jesus' name. Uh, well, obviously... David, <clears throat> you are the master at showing the dilemma that Muhammad has put Muslims in. I mean, just go and watch your videos, not just your live streams. Here's the problem, folks. Because Muhammad told <clears throat> his followers in the Quran that they think is the speech of Allah, that the scriptures in the possession of the Jews and Christians in the 7th century, the scriptures in the possession of the Jews and Christians in the seventh century are the uncorrupt, pure, preserved words of Allah. And those scriptures supposedly confirm Muhammad and Muhammad confirms them that they are one of the arguments, one of the chief arguments. It's all throughout the Quran. We've done sessions on this. One of the chief arguments of Muhammad is a true prophet is that he confirms the scriptures and the scriptures confirm his message. Ah, oh, but surprise, David, surprise. The scriptures that the Jews and Christians had do anything but confirm Muhammad. The only thing they confirm is that Muhammad is a false prophet, <laughs> who if he lived at the time of Moses, would have been stoned and killed without mercy. And you can talk about why, you know, the satanic verses and so forth. And according to the Christian scriptures, he's an antichrist. One of the many antichrists who are to come into the world in 1 John 2 verse 18. John tells us, not just one Antichrist, Christians, 1 John 2, verse 18. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. He goes, children, you know, the hours come, the Antichrist will appear, but many Antichrists have gone into the world. And what is an Antichrist, according to John, as the Lord enables us to recall these facts correctly for the glory of Jesus? An Antichrist is one who says, God is not the Father, Jesus is not his Son. In 1 John 2, verses 22 to 23, if you deny the Son, you deny the Father. If you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. You are an Antichrist. Surprise, David. Muhammad says his God is not the Father and Jesus is not the Son. So from the perspective of those scriptures, Muhammad is an Antichrist, a false prophet who's in hell. And Muslims, there's no way for you to get out of it because the scriptures that the Jews and Christians have is what we possess today. They're identical. 
historically, textually, archaeologically, you can't deny that. Yeah, Muslims, um, <clears throat> do you, guys, even if even if you, you know, Muslims, if you don't understand the individual points we're making about individual passages, at least try to get your minds around this central point. It was absolutely idiotic of Muhammad to point to the Bible as confirmation yeah. of his prophethood when, according to the Bible, he's a false prophet and an antichrist, right? Yeah. And, and guys, in case you don't understand how how significant this is. Imagine I say, I'm a prophet, right? And people say, oh, what's your evidence that you're a prophet? And I say, I'm a prophet. If you go down by the river, there's a big sign there that says, David Wood is a prophet. That's the proof. That's my proof. There's going to be a big sign over there that says, David Wood is a prophet. And suppose you say, okay, let's go check this out. And you walk down by the river and there's a big sign that says, don't believe David Wood. He's a chronic liar. Don't believe anything he says. He's a false prophet. <clears throat> what should you then say? Well, according to Muslims, you should say, well, I guess the sign's been corrupted. He is a true prophet. That would be it. That would be moronic. I told you what the sign is going to say. If the sign doesn't say what I said, then obviously I'm not telling the truth here. But what does Muhammad do? He says, yes, it's in the it's in the Torah that's with the Jews. And it's it's in the it's in the, the, the gospel that's with the Christians that the Christians still have in their possession. Those are the books. Those are the books that say I'm a prophet. And you go to those books and th those books both say, do not believe this man. He's a false prophet and a deceiver and a liar and an antichrist. And what do Muslims say? Well, I guess those parts have been corrupted. <laughs> Guys, Muhammad said that the books confirm him and the books call him a false prophet and an antichrist. My goodness. This, this should be like indisputable proof that you're dealing with a false prophet among the other 50 indisputable proofs that we have that he's a false prophet. But for some reason, it's, it's never good enough. Wow. All right. <laughs> you ready to go to the first one, Sam? Yeah. Uh, you already have one? Yeah. Kill a, Khan, kill a Khan here. Okay. Let's kill it. Kill a Khan. And by Let's the way, anyone, it. anyone, uh, uh, you got, if you got Muslim friends, and you Muslims here, give us your best. Give us your best shot. Keep in mind, your the, the, the status of your prophet is riding on this, right? Your prophet said, this is how we can know that he's a prophet. We can know that he's a prophet because he's, he's mentioned in our scriptures. Um, so we ask where he's mentioned in the Torah and the gospel. For some reason, for some reason, Muslims go to the Song of Solomon. <laughs> Which is amazing because these same Muslims, when they're attacking the Bible, will say, oh, you can't trust this. You can't trust the Bible because it contains the Song of Solomon, which is this book about this sexual relationship between a man and woman. Can't have that in your book. Oh, yeah. Where you go? Where you, Sam, notice it's kind of a it's kind of a mini version of their of their view of the Bible as a whole. Right. So you can't trust the Bible. It's a sick book. It's filled with porn. Oh, my goodness. You can't trust the Bible. Guys, uh, what's your evidence for Muhammad? The Bible? But then you've got the Song of Solomon. You can't trust the Song of Solomon. Oh, my goodness. They're sitting there talking about each other's body parts. You can't trust that. He's talking about her breasts. You can't trust that book, that evil, sick book. Guys, what's your first argument? What's your favorite first argument for Muhammad being in the Bible? Song of Solomon. What an amazing religion, man. I can't get enough of this religion. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, All right. Well, yeah. Sam, we have Killicon. I don't recall seeing if uh, if this was serious or, or not, but it's very common. This is one of the top two or three they go to. But here we have Muhammad is mentioned by name in original Song of Songs, uh, Song of uh, S uh, Songs of Solomon, Hebrew without vowels, which was invented in seventh century. It's also got his physical features: ruddy skin, hair like raven, which means Arab, <laughs> etc. Because you know, Sam, hair like a raven. No one's got. No one's got. Nobody no one's in got the world. Like that man. What's wrong with you? Definitely that's a Arab. unique defining characteristic. Wait, man. matter of fact, they said they said ruddy skin. That's Arab. Well, gosh, wasn't David described as ruddy skin? So David was in King David was an Arab. My goodness, we're learning all all kinds of things about uh about the Bible now. All right, Sam. Um, yes. I, I've got the passage pulled up, so we can go ahead and read it anytime we want. But uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and share anything you you want, and then I'll, yeah. I'll read it whenever you're ready. Okay, no, no, just I'm ready for the passage so we can dismantle it. There's not much to say, but was he joking or is he serious? Don't know. We, you didn't you didn't confirm that? I mean, well, it, it's, I it, so, it sounds like he's Khan. serious. It sounds like he's serious. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, because it says Khan, so I'm assuming unless he left Islam, it's typically a Muslim name, not to generalize. So let's go with it. Song of Solomon 516. Let's right, go with it. Should I pull it up passage. and should I pull it up and ring it? Yep. Yeah, right. go ahead. Take it from there. All <laughs> right. So see if I have the technology still. 
All right. So we'll go ahead and read the... Uh, matter of fact, let's just go ahead and read the whole chapter so we can all know what we're talking about here. Yep. It's pretty short. Um, <clears throat> Song of Solomon 5. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I came... So he says, I came to my garden, my sister, my bride. So he, who's he, by the way? Is this Is this got to be Muhammad talking? He says, I came to my garden, my sister, my bride. I gathered my myrrh with my spice. I ate honeycomb with my honey. I drank my wine with my milk. Uh-oh, he's drinking wine. That's definitely Muhammad. <laughs> he's... Others, eat, friends, drink, and be drunk with love. Oh, my goodness. Talking about drinking here. The bride searched for her beloved. She, I slept, but my heart was awake. A sound, my beloved is knocking. Open to me. So her, keep in mind, Muslims... Her beloved is Muhammad. So this is Solomon's wife, and she's talking about her beloved, but you guys believe that she's actually talking about Muhammad. So here she's lusting after, why do you believe she's talking about Muhammad? Did she get a vision of Muhammad or something like that? And she's like thinking yeah. thinking about him. Oh, I can't get my mind off this, this guy who's not going to be born for 2,000 years. Um, all right, let's see here. I slept, but my heart was awake. A sound, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove. So this is Muhammad talking. Muhammad says, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is wet with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. I had put off my garment. How could I put it on? I had bathed my feet. How could I soil them? My beloved put his hand to the latch, and my heart was thrilled within me. I arose to open to my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh. My fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the bolt. This is strange because Muhammad's there at, at the door. So he's at the door of, what is this guy, some sick pervert? This guy's banging on the door of Solomon's wife trying to sneak in. So this would mean that Muhammad's trying to commit adultery with Solomon's wife. What is this, Muslims? I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had turned and gone. My soul failed me when he spoke. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. The watchmen found me as they went about in the city. They beat. So Muhammad was time traveling, right? How long this was? Hang on. <laughs> how long was this? This was, about existence. this was about 16. This is about 1600 yeah. years, right? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Between 15 and 1600 years, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Muhammad wasn't born for another 15 or 1600 years. But somehow he's uh, he's banging on the door here of Solomon's wife. And she's looking around for him. And then the watchmen are, are going around the city somehow. So so maybe this is the new scientific miracle of Islam. Muhammad invented time travel and went back in time here. The watchmen found me as they went about in the city. They beat me. They bruised me. They took away my veil. Those watchmen of the walls. You see, she's wearing a veil. Muslims were the only ones ever to do that. So she was a Muslim. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved... That you tell him, I am sick with love. Notice, she's talking to the daughters of Jerusalem. She's talking to Jews about finding her beloved at nearly 1,000 BC. And so let's go ahead and get, get the response there. So these are the others. What is your beloved more than another beloved, O most beautiful among women? What is your beloved more than another beloved that you thus adjure us? Now notice, he's got to, this actually has to be, this actually has to be, Muhammad, because she's a beautiful wo woman. And we know how Muhammad was about uh, taking other beautiful women from people. He did that with his own adopted son, took, took, uh, took, took his adopted son's beautiful wife, um, took, uh, took Kanana's Can beautiful wife. Uh -huh. But they ask, hey, tell us, about your, tell us about your beloved. My beloved is radiant and ruddy, verse 10. So here we get, here we get to the part that Muslims are going to use to show that this is actually about Muhammad. My beloved is radiant and ruddy. Distingu Keep in mind why this is happening. He came to her door, knocked. Then by the time she opened, he was gone. So she's saying, hey, look for him. And they're saying, well, tell us about it. My beloved is radiant and ruddy, distinguished among 10,000. Uh, you see that there? He's radiant and ruddy, Sam. <laughs> That's got to be Muhammad. He's, He's the only one. one. gorgeous beast. Got to be, oh. be an Arab. His oh. head is the finest gold. His locks are wavy, black as a raven. There you have it, black hair. Got to be Muhammad, can only be Muhammad. Yeah. His eyes are like doves beside streams of water, bathed in milk, sitting beside a full pool. His cheeks are like beds of spices, mounds of sweet-smelling herbs. His lips are lilies dripping liquid uh -huh. myrrh. His arms are rods of gold set with jewels. His body is polished ivory, bedecked with sapphires. His legs are an alabaster 
Col our alabaster right. columns set on bases of gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet, and he is altogether desirable. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. She's still talking to the Jewish uh, ladies of Jerusalem. Yeah. So here you have it. Notice she goes body part by body part. Now, those of you who are watching, if you've never encountered this before, you're probably wondering where in the name of common sense are they getting Muhammad right. out of that? <laughs> right? Well, here's what they do. Here, here's what they do, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this is too funny. When you, so she goes body part by body part describing her beloved who was there almost 1000 BC. She describes his body so, so they understand why she's so enthralled and attracted to this guy. And you get down to verse 16, his mouth is most sweet, and he is altogether desirable. Well, right there, with th that desirable part, is in Hebrew, the word mahmad. Mahmad. And our Muslim friends, in what can only be described as the stupidest argument for that's yeah. ever been offered yeah. by yeah. anyone sure. for any position, even though, I mean, gosh, you could go to anyone. You could go to their greatest apologist. They all use this. His mouth is most sweet and he is altogether desirable because desirable there is the Hebrew word Mahmud. They say Mahmud is actually Muhammad. It's a name. You shouldn't translate the name as desirable. It should say his mouth is most sweet and he is altogether, he is Muhammad, right? He is Muhammad. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. So, Sam, we've got uh, uh, boy. we've got Solomon's wife lusting after a man who wasn't uh, who wasn't born for more than more than fifteen centuries after her, but she must have seen yeah. him in a vision, described what she saw in the vision, and now she's obsessed and lusting after him. Um, and this is the Islamic reasoning. This is their this is their their first proof. This is apart from Deuteronomy. Apart from Deuteronomy uh, 18 and the Gospel of John chapter 14, mm. this is w probably the most popular so-called prophecy about Muhammad. So, Sam, yeah. can you see any problems with yeah, yeah. with saying that this is the new proof that this is Muhammad? <laughs> you know, I'm laughing because even someone in the comments, Aaron Wiseman, said, we can skip this one. It's too ridiculous. Like, even he's shocked, flabbergasted that anyone can read that and see Muhammad. But David, here's the surprise, and you're going to keep getting surprised. I'm gonna we're going to get surprised. You forget, you're thinking she had a vision of Muhammad in the future. Don't you understand? Just like the paraclete, remember John 14, 17, that's Muhammad. Jesus said he's with you and shall be in you. Uh -huh. Don't you realize Muhammad was there, and he was inhabiting the body of Solomon. So she wasn't really looking at Solomon. It was Muhammad in his pre human existence inhabiting Solomon's body, and she got a glimpse of the inner man, and she started falling in love with that inner man of Solomon. What's wrong with you, you white racist? That's how we have to do it. I mean, what's wrong with you, man? But no, I'm joking. But, aside. but, but by, the, by the way, uh, people, are, people are pointing oh, out, people are pointing out. So Terry Vest says, well, uh, uh, she never said that he had white thighs, but he, he's talking about alabaster and ivory and stuff like that. So. That's how Muslims should be arguing this, right? Said ivory. Said ivory. But Muhammad had, you know, he, he was described as like the whitest dude in the history of Arabia. So yeah. that's the, that's that should be the new evidence. All right, Sam. What, what are we Now, got Lord, Lord willing, yeah, you got a lot to say about this too. Just right off the bat, I'm going to talk about just, just two points, and then you can show how Muhammad is used elsewhere if you want. I have the list too, but if you have it. Okay, now, number one, David told you Muhammad. Actually... If you look, and guys, you don't even need to Hebrew, no Hebrew. Glory to God for modern technology. Go to BibleHub.com. They have an interlinear where they write the Hebrew words <clears throat> in transliteration. You'll see that actually it's plural. It's Mahmadim. Mahmadim, it's plural, and it's intensive plural. But here's my first question to Killer Khan. That was his name or anyone else. Why do you insist that Mahmadim is Muhammad, even though it's plural, but don't insist that the <clears throat> previous line where it says his mouth is most sweet, there it's the word mam taqim, mam taqim. If Mahmadim, and I want the Christians to get this, if Mahmadim is the name of a prophet, Muhammad, <clears throat> then that means either Muhammad had another name, mam or this is prophesying two prophets, David, 
Mm-hmm. One Muhammad, another name, Mamtak. That means Muhammad cannot be the seal of the prophets. That means the Quran is wrong because we still have to wait for Mamtak to show up, David. Mm-hmm. David, the Quran is wrong. 3340 says that it says he's the seal of the prophets, which Muslims say there's no one to come after him. But no, 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 no. The prophecy says Mamtak and Muhammad's coming. So Muslims, can you please... Kindly point to us to Mamtak because we have to follow him. So that's my first objection, David. You with me there? Yeah. Surprise, David. Surprise. But he, here's where I want to have fun, and then you can mention why Muhammad proves too much and shows that Muhammad, if it's Muhammad, that means God hates Muhammad, will destroy Muhammad, and disgrace Muhammad. But here's <clears throat> where we're going to have fun, folks. <clears throat> this is what I call the phonic fallacy. And actually, I didn't invent this, I learned it from someone else. Because Mahmad somehow sounds like Muhammad, even though Mahmad doesn't mean what Muhammad means. In Arabic, Muhammad <clears throat> from Hamid means praised one, <clears throat> the one who's most praised. Mahmad doesn't mean that. The Hebrew word for praise would be halal, like hallelujah. That's where you get the word praise, but put that aside. Let's play that game. David, do you know that Allahu Akbar in Hebrew Allah Akbar means to suck a mouse, to sip a mouse. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because there's a word in Hebrew, don't take my word for it. There's a word in Hebrew, Allah, and it's actually used in the book of Job, Job 39, verse 30. And this word Allah means to suck up or to sip. And the word in Hebrew for mouse is Akbar. Akbar. So now notice, Allah sounds like Allah. Akbar sounds like Akbar. That means when Muslims say Allahu Akbar, in Hebrew that's Allah Akbar means to suck a mouse, sip a mouse, suck up a mouse, sip up a mouse. So you Muslims are saying you sip mice or mice, that's the plural, you said mice. all day, all night. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You know, you know, it's, 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 it's. So that's what they're saying, David. They sip mice. So, uh, Muslims, do you, do you understand the point of what Sam just said? Uh, if you're saying, oh, Mahmud, that, that sounds like Muhammad, even though it's a perfectly normal Hebrew word that occurs in multiple places in the Old Testament, in which any person who spoke Hebrew back then would understand what the word meant. And you're saying, ah, but it sounds like Muhammad, so it should be actually translated Muhammad. Well, as, as Sam pointed out, when you, if we're gonna, if we're gonna use that logic, that argument, that reasoning, if we can even call it reasoning, um, Akbar means a mouse in Hebrew, right? So when you Muslims say Allahu Akbar, well, one, if we, if we just wanted to take the Akbar part, then then you'd be saying that Allah is a mouse, and so your God is a mouse, and you worship a mouse. Um, and, and two, as Sam pointed out, that it means to to sip on or to to suck on. And so when you say Allahu Akbar, if we're saying, oh, that word sounds like these other words in, in Hebrew, then you'd be saying uh, suck on a mouse. That's right. For some reason, Muslims would never want to use that reasoning there or really anywhere else ever. Because for some reason, if when you use it like that, when you explain it like that, they think they understand how stupid it is to say, oh, here are these words that sound like this and, and, and they mean this in this language, but they sound like something else in a different language. Therefore, uh, we should we should say that they're really saying this other thing in this other language. That's completely idiotic. But they want to mm-hmm. say Mahmud. It sounds like Muhammad. And therefore, it makes no sense in this passage. Makes no sense whatsoever, but we're yeah. just going to insert it in there. Why? Because that's how desperate we are in Islam. Our prophet said that he's mentioned in the scriptures of the Jews and Christians, and so we have to find them there, or it's actually going to make it seem like he's a false prophet. And we don't want to. We don't want to make our prophet sound like a false prophet. So Allah's a mouse. Suck exactly. a mouse. We're, but- we're, we don't care. <laughs> Killer Khan did the to He said, it's not Mahmud, David, it's Muhammad. That's the pronunciation. Now, I have the blue letter up, and they okay. give you the pronunciation of the word. Do you want me to play it, or do you want to play it? Go, go, it? Go, it? Go, go ahead and play it, because, I, I mean, I, I, you, can, you can ask people who speak Hebrew this. Yeah, but see, here's the beautiful thing. Modern technology, folks, blueletterbible.org. You guys don't know how blessed you are that you can just go online and read this for yourself. He said, yeah, no, you're a liar, David. 
And they keep harping about Farid's video and respond to it. I haven't seen it, but we'll be more than happy to decimate it by oh, Jesus. All right, but now. Oh yeah, we, yeah, we can we can go on blam. We'd be happy to go through there, and we'll get we'll get we'll get an actual Hebrew scholar on here to ag, to shred it because Sam here here's what's hilarious. Muslims will go to their apologists who know absolutely no Hebrew, who certainly didn't didn't study Hebrew, who lied to them, and they'll say, "You see, he said it," and they'll believe they'll mindlessly believe anything their apologist says, no matter how stupid it is. Zucker and I could say, uh, in verse one here. Chapter 5, verse 1, I came to my garden, my sister, my bride. You know, the word garden there is actually, Muhammad is a true prophet. And they'll go, oh, see, you, you, yeah, that's what it says in the Hebrew. And it doesn't matter who you get to refute them. It doesn't matter how stupid it is. They'll all believe it and accept it and repeat it. It's a, it's a wonderful religion, man. It's an awesome religion, but go ahead. Let me play it, then I'm going to put my plugs on so you don't hear the air conditioning. Guys, notice, he said, no, it's not Mahmoud, it's Muhammad. Here you go, blueletterbible.org. Let me see if I got it fully blasted, okay. Strong's H, 4261. Mahmad. Uh-oh. Mahmad. Uh-oh. That's like, isn't that exactly what I said? Exactly. Let me one more time. Guys, hear it? Strong's H, 4261. Mahmad. Mahmad. Oh, but you're a liar. He's a liar, too, with you, David. You're both liars, dude. So wow. You? Okay. You're both liars. So, so you know? <laughs> yeah. Notice, hey, Sam, I actually wanted to make a, a video on this. Um... But uh, when you read the early, uh, when you read the Muslim sources, Ibn Ishaq and uh, Bukhari and so on, they act like it's this big conspiracy among Jews and Christians to cover up that the Bible talks about Muhammad left and right, right? Uh, so they've got Heraclius, the Roman emperor, and he's panicking. He's panicking because, oh, Muhammad is confirmed in our book, and we all know it, and what are we going to do? And the Jews are, are lying about this, and the Christians are lying about this. And it's very simple. We ask, okay, where are they? And we get stuff like this. We get idiotic nonsense like this. But notice, notice, from the very earliest Muslim sources we have, when you're, you're pointing out to them, hey, there's nothing about Muhammad in this book. Our book calls him a false prophet. Their response is is insane conspiracy theories. You're covering up. You're covering up what it really says. You're 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 all conspiring to to show that Muhammad is not mentioned in your scripture. That's that's their response. So what do we have here? Well, everyone's covering up. Everyone's covering up that it's Muhammad and not Mahmud. And the Hebrew scholars and the uh, every all these scholars they're all they're all getting it wrong, trying to cover up that it's Muhammad. Well, Sam, no matter, even if we wanted to grant the pronunciation Muhammad, yeah, irrelevant. it's still a word that occurs in multiple places in the Old Testament, right. is it not? Yeah. Let me add one point real quick. Yes. Because, again, they're saying that the beloved is actually referring to Muhammad here. All right, right, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't want to do this. I try to be nice. I always try to be nice. <laughs> I don't, not really. Um, I try to be as nice as I... No, I don't even do that. All right. Let me yeah. just let me yeah. just uh, bring this up. So, next chapter here. What do we have? Chapter six, right? So you have the end of chapter five, right? And then it, immediately it goes on to chapter six. You get down to verse three. My beloved. So this the beloved is Muhammad, right? The beloved is Muhammad, right? My beloved has gone down to his garden to the beds of spices, to graze in the gardens and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. He grazes among the lilies. So this is Solomon's wife. This is Solomon's wife. And she says, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. He grazes among the lilies. Okay, now, so the beloved is Muhammad, right, Muslims? Go ahead and confirm, Muslims, that, that Muhammad is the beloved. So this is Solomon's wife saying, Muhammad is mine and I am his. So Muhammad belongs to Solomon's wife and she belongs to him. So Muhammad's, this woman who's Solomon's wife belongs to Muhammad. And if you look 
at the rest of the book here, he's clearly, he's clearly lusting after her. You are as beautiful as Terza, my love, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. Turn your eyes away from me, for they overwhelm me. Your hair is like a flock of goats leaping down the slopes of Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes that have, he's clearly lusting after her, right? He talks yes. about her breasts. He talks about everything, right? Now, think about this. Muslims, this is Solomon's wife, and Muslims want to say that, <laughs> that her beloved isn't Solomon, it's Muhammad. And she's talking about Muhammad. So she's actually lusting after Muhammad. She must have been given some vision of Muhammad. She's like, huh, Solomon, who cares about him? I'm lusting after this guy who's going to be born 15 centuries later, right? So she's lusting after him. But guess what? He's lusting after her too. She's been dead for 1500 years and Muhammad's lusting after her. What do Muslims, what does that mean? Your, your prophet is lusting after the body of a woman who's been dead for 15 centuries. What does that mean? What do we call a person who's sexually attracted to a dead person? We call him a necrophile. Your prophet, right. Muslims, was a necrophile. He was attracted to a dead woman, a woman who'd been dead for 15 centuries. She's not even, she's not even, she's barely a pile of bones. And your prophet's <laughs> lusting after her. So you're telling us that your prophet is the only person in history to lust after a woman who's been dead for 15 centuries. My goodness, what a sick, sick man yeah. you're telling us about. All right, David, Sam. Yeah. Brother, but you're still not getting it. It's your <laughs> hatred. You still see, I thought I made it clear. I'm gonna have to go on the side of the Muslims. Didn't I just tell you that Muhammad's spirit was there inhabiting the body of Solomon? Don't you remember? And by the way, Farida brought up Deuteronomy 33 too in his video, which we'll get to, God willing. But remember, according to the Muslims, John 14, 17, the Paraclete, and God forbid such blasphemy, but I'm just mocking, mocking them. It's when Jesus said the paraclete, you know him because he's with you and shall be in you. So according to Muslims, that's Muhammad. Muhammad was already there, David, because Muhammad pre-existed his human birth, because Muhammad is divine in their view. So Muhammad's spirit was there with Jesus. He must have been there with Solomon. He must have been inhabiting Solomon's body because Jesus said the paraclete shall be with you and in you. So if he could be in the disciples... He must have been in Solomon, so you keep forgetting that what the the bride of Solomon was actually lusting after was in Solomon, but the spirit in him, and it was the spirit in Solomon that was desiring her. Solomon was just a passive human vehicle for the spirit of Muhammad to inhabit. Don't you get it by now? Um, How many I'm times I got to explain it to you, man? A, a lot, man, because I'm a little slow. I mean, okay, when good, a woman good. has a husband and she's talking about his body and how great his body is, and then she uses a perfectly normal Hebrew word to say he's <laughs> altogether lovely, and you say this is actually about a prophet, and she's lusting after this prophet who's not going to be born for another 15 centuries, and then she he's lusting after her, then you've got your prophet 15 centuries later lusting after a woman who's been dead for 15 centuries, and normally we'd think, no, that's impossible, but with Muhammad... <laughs> When it comes to sexual exploits of Muhammad, all things are possible, right? Because this guy, I, I wouldn't put anything past this guy, right? Um, so, all right, yeah. Sam. Uh, um, you want to put the icing on the cake where show if it's Muhammad means Muhammad, how the Bible says God will destroy Muhammad and disgrace and, and, Muhammad? And if you could, if you could show that Muhammad was actually Ezekiel's wife, that's what I'd I like to. I'd like to find that Muhammad was actually Ezekiel's wife. And notice, ladies and gentlemen, if yes, Muslims, yes. if Muslims are right, Muhammad was married to Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, and Muhammad was the woman in that relationship. Yeah. Let me let me actually help them to confirm this for themselves. Everything we're showing you, you can go to BibleHub.com, guys. Go to BibleHub.com. Go to their interlinear. Go to Song of Solomon, five sixteen, chapter five or sixteen. They're going to give you the word Mahmud and show you all the places it appears. It appears <clears throat> over half a dozen times and in context not favorable to Muhammad. But I'm going to go to Ezekiel 24, 16. Muhammad was the first transgender. He was neither male nor female. So he could be male or female depending on the circumstances. So one, one time he'll be male because he finds an attractive woman that he wants to sleep with. But if he finds an attractive man, he'll become a female. That's the mystery of Muhammad, the greatest man who ever lived, who so, can transcend transcend even gender, David. It's a miracle. So me, I'm telling you, that's why I'm ready to take shahada. Now, Ezekiel 24, 16. Guys, 
The word Muhammad is used here. God speaking to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 24, 16. Son of man, behold, I'm about to take from you the Muhammad of your eyes. Muhammad, the word is Muhammad. But let me give you the translation. Yeah, so so just, just, to be clear, just to be clear here, Muslims, the word is Muhammad, but yes. uh, our Muslim friends want to say, no, if you go back before the alphabet was changed or blah, 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 it's actually Muhammad. Well, great, it's yes. the same word. So if you want to say, if you want to say that it's Muhammad in 516, guess what? It's the same word here. So it's Muhammad. And we're going to hold you. We know we know you guys are like the ultimate enemies of consistency, but we're going to hold you consistent. If Muhammad or Muhammad or however you want to put it means is referring to your prophet, by golly, you're stuck with that. Exactly. And now here's what you get. And by the way, this this actually qualifies being Muhammad more than Song of Solomon 516, because in Song of Solomon 516, it's plural, Mahmadim. Here it's singular, Mahmad. Son of man, behold, I'm about to take from you the Mahmad, Muhammad, the desire of your eyes with a blow. But you shall not mourn and you shall not weep and your tears shall not come. What's the context? God says, I'm going to take your wife away. I'm going to cause her to die. Notice Ezekiel's wife's name is Muhammad. Ezekiel's wife was Muhammad. So here Muhammad in a previous lifetime was actually incarnate as a woman. So Muhammad gets reincarnated over and over again. Prior to Ezekiel, he actually was Solomon. Then he appeared as Ezekiel's wife. And then later on, he appeared as an Arab named Muhammad. Man, this Muhammad is amazing, David. I'm yeah. really ready to become a Muslim. Yeah, guys, do, 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 you, do you understand what's what, what's being said here? So you have this you have this word. You have this word, okay. Mahmud, or however Muslims want to pretend it should be pronounced. And they say the word is Muhammad right there in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. And we know, I mean, that's that's completely ridiculous and idiotic to think, but that's how desperate they are to defend their prophet. They'll go to a book that is about Solomon and his bride and their sexual attraction to each other. Other Muslims will go to the same book and say, "You see, this is why you can't believe in the Bible. It's talking about all this sexual stuff. And But then Muslims will go right to the middle of that book and say, right here, after she's sitting there talking about how enthralled she is with her beloved's body, then she says, he's altogether lovely, and they want to say that altogether lovely there, since it's the, the actually the word Mahmud in the plural form, it should be uh, translated as Muhammad. It shouldn't be translated. It's actually his name. But then, hmm. guess what? Lo and behold, the same word, the same word appears in multiple places in the Old Testament. One of the places we find it is in the book of Ezekiel. And the, wor the word there, <laughs> Mahmud, <laughs> refers to Ezekiel's wife, right? Because God's saying, I'm, I'm taking away your, your beloved. I'm taking away your beloved, right. taking away the, 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 the one you desire from Ezekiel. And it refers to his wife. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you've got this word Mahmud, that means it's Muhammad. So Muhammad was Ezekiel's wife, not according to us. We think that's completely idiotic. But exactly. according to Muslims, according to Zakir Naik, according to Ahmed Didat, according to all these guys who want to translate Mahmud as Muhammad and say this is actually just referring to the prophet of Islam, Great, Muhammad is Ezekiel's wife, and that means that he's not only time traveling, he's not only time traveling, he's not only uh, a necrophile, he's he's also the bride of the prophet Ezekiel, which means that he's being born over and over again, he's being reincarnated, right. and one of his past right. lives, one of his past lives, he was Ezekiel's wife, and Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, was the woman in that relationship. Ouch. Man, he is amazing. He's so beauties. Now, I, I think, you know, I, we got more verses on Mahmoud if you want me to read a couple more or if you want to go to another point. You can read, that's you can read you. one or two more and then we'll jump okay. into We're getting uh, we're getting uh, Isaiah 42 here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because they mentioned Isaiah 42 and Farid's. They said mentioned Deuteronomy 33, too, as if we didn't already address it. Oh, whoa, whoa, but, whoa. Me, you mean the one yeah. that's... The, so Farid just yeah. deified Muhammad as well. Exactly. So he and just called saying, Muhammad the Lord. Wow, interesting. But not only that, they keep saying, see, you're ruined, David. Farid, I ruined you. You got to shut down your your channel now. It's over. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, one more example. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So he responded to my challenge where Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, no, we'll go, we'll go through it, right? Just like we that's did with right. Adnan. Yeah. Um, because Muslims, this is the point we're trying to get across to anyone 
whose thinking isn't so incredibly warped that they can, that they can no longer understand uh, reality. Um, you guys have these things that you say amongst yourselves and you think they're good arguments. And the arguments yeah. are the dumbest arguments that have ever been yeah. offered for anything, right? Just like it, it's like it's like I mean we, we spent we spent a couple weeks <coughs> going through your attempts to show that the Quran claims the Bible's been corrupted, right? Um, so I, I issued a challenge: give me one clear, unequivocal verse from the Quran that says the gospel's been corrupted. And I warned you. I said, don't go to verses that aren't talking about the gospel and aren't talking about corruption. And what did you do? You sent me a bunch of verses and a bunch of videos giving verses that aren't talking about the gospel and aren't talking about corruption of the text. And you said, see, we've refuted you. And what you really mean there is the Quran says whatever we want it to say. We're apostates. We do not believe in Allah. That's what you're telling me, right? Yeah. So now we, now all I'm doing is, is just doing it over and over again, right? Now I'm just saying, okay, your prophet says he's mentioned our scripture. Uh, where? Where where, where is he mentioned our scripture? He says it. And, and, and based on the sound of it, what are you going to? Ah, Deuteronomy 33, verse 2, which if you read it, it says the Lord. It specifically says Yahweh, God. And Muslims want to say, that's actually referring to Muhammad. But we're we're the pure monotheists, ladies and gentlemen. Well, great. Then you're saying that Muhammad is your God. And he and, and he's the only one. But you know, you see, this is insane, guys. It's absolutely insane what your religion does to your to your ability to think. And then you'll come along and ha ha, Fareed said it, so it must be good as gold. Well, guess what? We went through multiple video responses by Adnan. We went through multiple uh video responses by other people. And now we're happy to go through. If Fareed wants attention, I've never actually watched a, a video yeah. by Fareed. I know he's been coming after me for a while. I saw one one clip that the apostate prophet uh, showed. And then I saw, I don't know if it was a tweet or a Facebook post or something like that, where he was saying, how can it be rape if the father says it's okay? Right? He's talking about, he's talking about if, if a father gives his child bride to someone and then you... you we we would call it rape because we would say the the girl is not old enough to consent to sex, and so we would say that she's being raped. And Farid tries to defend Islam by saying, "Well, how can it be rape if the father said you could go bone my daughter?" And so this is the guy this is the guy we're dealing with. So that's all I know about Farid. Sam, yeah. sight unseen. Yeah. Uh, we have not seen this video. It could be no, the absolute most brilliant video anyone has ever seen he could yeah. completely refute us we hereby agree that we will play right. the entire thing the entire shebang and go through it argument by argument That's because right. if farid's friends if farid's uh, fans want to come on here and, and see boy right. you're gonna make it easy yep. for us go ahead sam yeah exactly yeah and just i'm just gonna have one final example of muhammad and then we can go into other topics but guys pay attention what we're saying if muhammad means muhammad then muslims are stuck because we have a slew of passages where the word Mahmud is used in contexts that are not pleasing to Muslims because the Mahmud of the Israelites of the Jews will be profaned. I'll just give you one, one more, that's it for the second time. I was going to go to 1 Kings 20, verse 6, but instead I'll keep it in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 24, verse 21. What will God do to Muhammad? Muslims, this is your argument being used consistently taken to its logical conclusion. What will God do to Muhammad? Ezekiel 24, verse 21. Speak to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, Adonai Yehovah. Behold, I'm about to profane, profane my sanctuary, profane the pride of your power, power, profane the Muhammad of your eyes and the delight of your soul. I'm going to profane Muhammad. I'm going to desecrate Muhammad. I'm going to shame Muhammad. I'm going to disgrace Muhammad. Because guess what the word? In the Hebrew is, it's Mahmad. I will profane the desire of your eyes, Mahmad of your eyes, and the delight of your soul and your sons and your daughters whom you have left behind will fall by the sword. So David, according to the Hebrew Bible, God hates Muhammad and will desecrate Muhammad, profane Muhammad, shame Muhammad, and humiliate Muhammad. That's what he's going to do. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we think it's completely ridiculous to translate Muhammad as Muhammad. You're the ones, Muslims, you're the ones telling us that the word Muhammad is actually Muhammad right there in Song of Solomon 516. Well, great, then it must be it must be what the word means in these other places. And so God promises to profane and disgrace your prophet, uh, who was also Ezekiel's wife and who was a time traveling necrophile. And a, and a woman at some point.
Okay, take beer, sip up a mouse. And take beer, sip and, up a mouse. And that's that's the one you guys started with. That's the one you guys started with. Um, wow. <laughs> notice, notice, guys, again, we want to be clear here. Why would anyone say, why would Muslim apologists say something so incredibly insane and ridiculous, right? Our prophet is mentioned right here in this book that's all about a sexual attraction between Solomon and his bride. And Muhammad, dag nabbit, that's actually talking about her lusting after Muhammad. Well, then she, he's actually lusting after her, but she's been dead for 1,500 years. Uh, but that's, that's, that's what the word means. That's what that word Mahmud means. Okay, well, great. Then Muhammad was Ezekiel's wife and God promises to disgrace Muhammad. Wh why would anyone put forward an argument that utterly ridiculously insane. I mean, it is insane. You have to be insane to put forward that argument and all your apologists do it. Why? Because that's how desperate they are. Your prophet claimed that he's mentioned in our scriptures. Your prophet said it. He said it. And since he said it, you're stuck with it. And so <laughs> that's on that's on you. All right, so Sam, uh, I already put up the next one, uh, uh, Isaiah 42. 42. So guys, guys, keep in mind, um, guys, keep in mind, think about this. Think about this. We asked, where does the Bible say that, uh, that Muhammad's a prophet, right? You say, uh, Song of Solomon 5.16. Well, nothing there about him being a prophet. <laughs> Doesn't say he's a prophet. <laughs> Says uh, it says Solomon's bride was lusting after him, so he got some sort of she got some sort of vision, and given your arguments, it actually said God is actually going to destroy and profane Muhammad. So this wouldn't mean that he's he's a. Uh, if we take your argument seriously, it doesn't mean that Muhammad's a prophet. It means he's, that he's someone that God is going to destroy and disgrace and profane. So we were asking where it says that he's a prophet, All right? So, all right. Now, Sam, there's a little side note. I put Isaiah 42 up on there, and uh, we can we can go ahead and go through the passage any part you want. Yes. But sure. one th one thing I, I have a problem with is that there are, trying to be nice here, there are Muslims who don't seem to understand anything that's being said by anyone. So look at this. Acts 17, apologetics. Seven years ago, you said the one prophesied in Deuteronomy was God. In your video challenge, you said it was an Israeli prophet. Oh What's his name? Farid has already uh, has already exposed you already. Uh, Abra Kadabra, you're talking about two different passages. Yeah. Yes. Deuteronomy 33, 2 says the Lord. It's talking about the Lord. And when the Lord appears in all caps, that's talking about God. You're talking about Deuteronomy 18, where God says he's going to send a prophet like Moses. And I pointed out there that that's talking about a Jewish prophet. A Jewish prophet. Why? Because that's what the phrase always means in Hebrew. It's referring to a fellow Jew. So look at look, look at the level. Look at the look at the intellectual ability of the people who are defending Muhammad here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You've got yeah. God. You've got God mentioned in Deuteronomy 33, and it's clearly just talking about God. Then you have in Deuteronomy 18 a prophet like Moses, and I say, oh, but there it's talking about a Jewish prophet, and here, in this other chapter, this completely different chapter, it's talking about God. And the Muslim response is, ha ha, you idiot, yeah. you've been exposed. Here you're saying it's an Israeli, an Israeli prophet, and over here you're saying it's God. Ha ha, you're so dumb, David. Yeah, there's yeah. there's someone dumb here in all of this. <laughs> but, oh, uh, gosh, guys, how does, Islam do, way, how does Islam do this to you guys? How does Islam produce this? It's amazing. And by the way, I just want to warn the Muslims. Muslims, keep talking about Farid exposing David Wood. And I promise you, it's not going to fare well for him because by the grace of God, we're going to decimate him and expose him. So keep running your mouth and get Farid in, in deeper trouble by saying that he exposed David Wood. Because I promise you when we're done, Farid is not going to like it. He's going to have to hide himself in a rock somewhere or go and smooch the black stone for comfort. So keep running your mouths. Watch and, what we're and, going to do and, by the and, grace and of And by, by the way, Sam, we're, we're, we're generous here. Fareed can come on here with us if he wants, right? Please. Oh, please. You, oh. you, you, fans, you oh. fans of Fareed, right? Because, just please. because, guys, 
I really, really, really don't like getting the videos and having to chop them up into pieces and then export them and then put them into this program. So you heard it here from us. If Fareed wants to just come on here with us and we can go we can go argument by argument. And and, to, and if Fareed wants to bring a friend so that, you know, there's two of us and two of him, then yes. uh, then th that's fine. And, and then we can all talk if. Uh, if he wants to, if he wants to come on by himself, then no problem. I can just moderate the discussion, and oh, yes. uh, happy, yeah, happy, happy to go through these one by one. And Fareed mm -hmm. can sit there and make things up left and right because he knows his fans are fine with that. And we'll be actually going, uh, going to yeah. the text yeah. and showing what it's really saying. So now he brought up Isaiah forty-two, but he didn't say much about it, right? He just said Isaiah forty-two. No, I'm that, saying that's Abdullah like the, that's like the yeah, so basically, Sam, let me let me break this down for you, but you know this. <laughs> so for years, when we asked, where's Muhammad mentioned, it's Deuteronomy 18 and John 14. And then people started learning responses to those. And then it became Isaiah, I mean, uh, and then it became uh, Song of Solomon 5.16, but people started learning responses to that. And now, I mean, the, the, the argument from Isaiah has been around for for as long as Muslims have been doing uh, apologetics. But this passage isn't one where you can just point out like how how laughably it absurd it is yes. instantly, right? You can't just say, well, gosh, you just deified your prophet or gosh, you just turned him into a yeah. necrophile or something like that. And they know that people in general aren't, aren't used to this passage as much. So this is the this is their new their new one and I mean their their new one in terms of popularity. Now 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 this is now this is the the most common one I see when Muslims uh, tell us where Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. So we'll go ahead and look at this. Uh, sure. But uh, you know as soon as people start learning responses to this, then oops, Muhammad will be mentioned somewhere else in the Bible that people haven't been focusing on, and this is constant. They can never say here's where he's mentioned and. It's clear, and it doesn't matter. The more you look at it, the more you'll see that he's a true prophet. They won't do that. They keep changing it. It's the ever-changing, shifting sands of Islamic apologetics. What are your thoughts on this, Sam? Should we read it, or, yes. or what do you think? Yeah, well, you know what? <clears throat> I think the key passage that they're focusing on, and maybe you want to bring it up, it's a servant of the Lord. But here's what they really focus on, specifically verse 11 of Isaiah 42. 10 to 12 for the context where it says the settlements where Kedar lives shall rejoice. You see, David, the servant is a descendant of Kedar. Who's Kedar? A son of Ishmael. That's their main chief argument. If they're not running to the later passage where you clearly show how they misinterpret that passage where it talks about the Lord doing something and they remove the name of the Lord in order to attribute it to Muhammad. But when I was dealing with this objection from Jamal Badawi, hearing his arguments, they would focus on specifically verse 11. And this is what it says. Folks, you understand why they're going to Isaiah 42? Notice how they read things into the passage. Isaiah 42, verse 11, <clears throat> it says, Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. You see? Let them shout from the mountaintops. Muhammad is a descendant of Kedar. The Quraysh are the descendants of Ishmael through Kedar. See, it's talking about the servant being an Arab, an Ishmaelite, a descendant of Kedar. That's the argument, David. So if you want to blow it out of the water, let's do it. Let me know how you want to proceed. All right. Let me go ahead and get this. Uh, let me go and get this passage up on the screen, and we'll go ahead and take a little little peek at it, and yeah. you can break all that down for us. Yes. And let's see what we got here. The Lord's chosen servant. Here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold. My chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth. Now that's interesting. It says I put my spirit upon him. But when that's they right. use John 14, they claim that Muhammad is the spirit. So exactly. now they've got, now the, now Muhammad is multi-personal. He is okay. the spirit who's upon himself. This is getting confusing, Sam. Muhammad is the spirit and yet the spirit is put upon him. All right, I'm, I'm just confused. I put yeah. my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Yeah, that's what Muhammad did. Just look around you. He's bringing so much justice. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice. He'll bone a little girl, though, <laughs> or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, but he'll take this wife of his own adopted son and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice to everyone, to Christians, to, to Jews, and to everyone he's slaughtering. 
He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. So, wow. So Muhammad will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. Mm -hmm. And the coastlands wait for his law. They wait for Muhammad's law. So they're waiting for Sharia. But notice, Muhammad has established justice in the earth. And it, it's an ongoing process. So he's still around doing it, Sam. This is interesting. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Yep. By the way, guys, do you see anything that would make you think of Muhammad here? If you're not, if you're not a Muslim, thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people and spirit and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes that are blind. So that, keep in mind, this is God talking about Muhammad. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, okay. to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Ladies and gentlemen, anything you've seen so far that would make you think, oh, this has to be Muhammad. Nothing so far. All right, let's go ahead and get to the part they really want to go to. Yeah. Verse 10, sing to the Lord a new song. Up. Oh, better watch out with that singing to the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants, let the desert and its cities lift up their voice. Let uh, the villages that Kedar inhabits, let the inhabitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The Lord okay. goes out like a mighty man, like uh, Sam. I thought I thought uh, God doesn't go out like a man. The Lord goes out uh, like a mighty man, like a man of war. He stirs up zeal. He cries out. He shouts aloud. He shows himself mighty against right. his foes. And this is one of the places where. Uh, the, the channel Merciful Servant, they completely deified Muhammad. Exactly. There, there are at least four passages in the Bible that I can think of where, where yeah. Muslims say this is talking about, where Muslims say it's talking about Muhammad and it's actually about God. Yeah. And so yeah. they've, they've, already, they've already given me enough to show them that they really do believe that Muhammad is God. But yep. uh, Sam, so the, these are the main places they want to go to here, right? Namely, yeah. namely Kidar and, and Salah here. So... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You want to make a point? Go ahead before I even jump all, in. All I wanted to say was, ladies and gentlemen, um, prior to prior to Muslims insisting that this is a prophecy about Muhammad, have you seen anything that would make you think for even one second that this prophecy in the book of Isaiah, and I'm sure Sam is going to point out the absurdity of Muslims going to the book of That's Isaiah, right to yeah. defend Islam, it's borderline insane, right? It's like when Muslims go to the Gospel of John to defend Muhammad, right? A book yep. that is saturated. The Gospel of John is absolutely saturated with claims that Jesus is God who's dying on the cross for sins and rising from the dead. Completely contradicts Islam. They go right to the middle of the book. Well, guess what? You have... the Sam... Uh, the, the book of Isaiah is kind of the gospel of John of the Old Testament, isn't it? He is 100%. <laughs> In fact, if I, didn't, if I didn't tell people where I'm reading from, I promise you, you'll think I'm reading one of the books of the New Testament. That's how clear Isaiah is in affirming the deity of the Messiah, his humanity, the multi-personal nature of God, and the Messiah's vicarious death for our sins and exaltation to the throne of God. You would think, if I didn't tell you this is Old Testament, and I just read it, you'd think, hey man, that's a Christian book. Right? And, 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 and I've and actually Sam, done Sam, it. Yeah, Sam, you're, you're saying that. We've done that. We actually sat down with a, a young uh, convert to Islam. We, you, you read to her from Isaiah 53, and we said, we said, who's this about? She goes, Jesus, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And then exactly. our, friend, our friend Anthony Rogers, he has Jewish family members, and he read uh, he's talking to one of his Jewish family members, and he read. He said, "Look, let me read this." And he was reading Isaiah 53, and his Jewish family member said, "We're Jews. We don't believe in the New Testament. We believe in the Old Testament." Yeah. And, so, yeah. and he, was, he said, "This is the Old Testament." Yeah. And so exactly. uh, interesting stuff. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's go ahead. so clear. Now, guys, bear with me because I'm going to show you how you can demonstrate conclusively from the language of Isaiah that this servant is an Israelite. He's not an Arab, and that Muhammad. There is no conclusive proof, guys. I need. 
and I want you to re-listen to this session just for our exegesis of Isaiah 42. You're going to learn two things. Isaiah 42, the servant is an Israelite. <clears throat> it's not the nation here. It's a specific Israelite from the nation that represents a nation. And secondly, you're going to learn that the Muslim sources themselves contradict themselves because they're not certain whether Muhammad is a descendant of Ishmael through Kedar or Nebuith, <clears throat> Ishmael's other son. And I have the references here, but... Let me first show you why Isaiah 42 cannot be <clears throat> an Arab, has to be an Israelite, because I want you to see the language. Note number one, it says that God's spirit will be upon this servant, his beloved, his spirit will be upon him. So remember that. Secondly, I want you to remember verse six. Verse six says, I'm the Lord. I've called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. <clears throat> I will give you as a covenant for the people. So he's going to be a covenant for the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, and I'm reading all the way into seven, pay attention, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prisoners who sit in darkness. So remember, this servant has God's spirit upon him. He's a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, and he will set people free who sit in darkness. Remember those factors, because all you need to do, go to Isaiah 49. In <clears throat> Isaiah 49, notice what the Lord says, about the servant and it's actually the servant speaking by inspiration right we have the spirit of the servant because we believe is jesus so this is jesus in his pre existence because he is god he eternally existed speaking through the mouth of isaiah look notice this isaiah 49 verses 1 to 3 listen to me O coastlands and give attention you people from <clears throat> afar the lord called me from the womb from the body of my mother he named my name he made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant. First connection. Isaiah 42, 1. Behold my servant, in my, on whom my soul delights, upon whom is my spirit. So here it is. You are my servant. Israel, not Ishmael, not Kedar, not Nebuith. You are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified. Now I'm going to skip to five and six to show you that the servant Israel is not the nation, but an individual that represents the nation who will be the savior of the nation. How do I know? Notice again, you are my servant Israel, not Ishmael, five and six. And now the Lord says, he who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord. Pay attention. This servant called Israel says that God, who named me Israel to be his servant, has sent me not only to save Israel, so you got two Israels there, one individual who saves the nation Israel, but what else will he do? Notice the connection with Isaiah 42, verses 6 and 7, right? To, to gather Israel to him, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant. You're more than that. To raise up the tribes of Jacob. To bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations. That's Isaiah 42 verse 6. That my salvation may reach the end of the earth. And the final connection, verse 8. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor I have answered you. In a day of salvation I have helped you. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people. You, my servant Israel, will be the covenant to the people. That's Isaiah 42, verse 6. A light of salvation to the nations. That's Isaiah 42, verse 6. Clearly, Isaiah 42, that servant is the same servant in Isaiah 49. He's called Israel, not Ishmael, an individual who saves the nation Israel and brings salvation to the ends of the earth. Now, again, let me wrap it up by showing you the other verses in the book of Isaiah that shows the servant of Isaiah 42 is not an Ishmaelite. He's an Israelite who is Messiah Jesus. Because in Isaiah 42, 1, it says, my spirit will be upon him. Mm -hmm. Well, here, Isaiah 11, now, what, what, verses what, 1 to 2. What, one second, Sam. So just because uh, we know that especially people who, who would follow Farid, um, are going to have problems understanding anything you said. Yeah, so just to recap, ladies and gentlemen, you have this passage, Isaiah 42, and it's talking about the servant of the Lord. Well, guess what? Guess what? Isaiah talks about this particular servant 
over and over again in the book of Isaiah. And it's clear in some of these passages that he's talking about the same servant of the Lord that he talks about in Isaiah 42. So obviously, if the servant in Isaiah 42 is Muhammad, then these other passages are going to line up with Islam, right? These other passages are going to teach the same thing, right? And if they don't, if these other passages are talking about the servant of the Lord, and it can't possibly be Muhammad, and it's referring, the text is referring to the exact same servant of the Lord that we read about in Isaiah 42, then this means that it's not talking about Muhammad, right? And that, that your new go-to passage is absolute garbage as far as yeah. proving that Muhammad is a true prophet, right? Is everyone, exactly. Does everyone get that? By the way, but before, before I forget, because... Um, Getting comments over here, uh, Sidney Bellow says, you might want to address the Fareed response because these people are getting annoying. Well, guys, exactly. we can't we can't address the response. I, we can't I, we can't watch it right in the middle of the uh, of the program yeah. here. Uh, even to have it in this program, I'd have to download it and things like that. But um, uh, Sam, you free tomorrow? Yes. God willing, yes. Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's here is the plan. Here is the plan. Tomorrow, we will go through, and I don't know if I. I don't know if his response is two minutes or it's, it's like half an hour or an hour or something like that. But uh, hopefully it's it's manageable for us to get through it. But guys, tomorrow, two options, two options. And the choice falls to Fareed. Either we will go through Fareed's video and completely expose him. Or if Fareed would prefer, instead of us going through his video, he can just appear here and... He would yes. need to contact me pretty quickly. So all you Muslims run out and say, Fareed, David said you can be on with him and Sam Shamoon tomorrow. Right. Either find a partner so that it can be two on two. Or or uh if uh if he just wants to come on by himself, I'll just I'll just moderate a discussion here. All right. Please. So so those are the options. So if Fareed wants to come on, much. Fareed can come on and he can't Please. complain. And my goodness, Muslims. If we start going through his video tomorrow because he doesn't want to come on, please, 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 please. I know you're going to do it anyway, but you're going to, why aren't you having Fareed on? <laughs> right? So we're, we're the ones who keep inviting Adnan Rashid and, and these other guys on. They don't, they don't want to come on because they prefer talking directly to their Muslim fans who don't know what they're talking about and they can have the advantage of an atmosphere of ignorance. It's not going to work. With, it's not going to work with Sam Shamu. So that's, just, that's the offer. We'll go through his video or he can be here in person. Yeah. His pick. Just to make it clear, maybe they're going to think, uh, you know, we're back. Please, I prefer the second option. Please tell Farid, Sam Shimon's begging you, come on and silence Sam Shimon. Put him in his place. Silence, Please. silence this horrible, Please. horrible sham of a person. That's right. Sham Shimon. Who blocks people and insults people and calls them puppy, puppies and all that. Put me in my place, please. I need a good, you know, remember that movie? I can't repeat it, but uh, my cousin Vinny, when he told the guy, I can use a good butt, butt weapon, right? I'm giving you the G-Rick. I can use one. Come on, Muslims. Beat me down, please. <laughs> All right. Just a few more points in Isaiah 42 for the benefit of the Christians to show Isaiah 42, the servant is Israel, an individual, not the nation. Because in Isaiah 49, don't forget, you have the servant called Israel who saves the nation Israel. So there are two Israels there. An individual called Israel, the nation called Israel that the servant saves. It's one and the same. Further proof. Isaiah 42 is about an Israelite, specifically the Messiah. Guys, don't forget what you read in Isaiah 42. It said that God's Spirit will be upon him. This immediately connects him with the root of Jesse, Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2. In Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse. Who's Jesse? The father of David. Just read Ruth chapter 4, verse 22, and 1 Samuel chapter 16, David was the youngest of Jesse's eight sons. Jesse is the father of David. How do I know this root is a servant? Because now notice the language. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his shoots shall bear fruit. Watch the connection. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So notice the connection with the servant of Isaiah 42. The root of Jesse and the servant both have God's spirit resting upon them. And if you read later on in Isaiah 11, verses 9 to 11, specifically verse 10, it says that the Gentiles will gather to the banner of the root of Jesse. 
just like the servant is the light of salvation for the Gentiles, the root of Jesse will gather the nations to himself. The second connection. So who's the root of Jesse? That's the son of David, because Jesse is the father of David. So then who is this root that comes from Jesse's line? David line? The Messiah, which then brings me to the final connection. You remember in Isaiah 42, 7, it says that he will set the prisoners free who sit in darkness? Folks, prisoners sitting in darkness will be set free by the servant. Now, notice the connection with Isaiah 9, verses 1 to 2, which is going to be a nightmare for Muhammad and the Quran. <clears throat> Isaiah 9, verses 1 to 2. But there will be no gloom for her, for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, guys, pay attention to the location. The latter time, he, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. What will God glorify? Galilee of the nations. Read the Gospels, specifically Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. Matthew quotes Isaiah 9, verses 1 to 2, in reference to Jesus going to the Jordan to be baptized and returning to Galilee to begin his ministry. So where will this take place? Galilee of the nations, not Mecca, not Medina. And what will take place in Galilee? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. So people in darkness will have the light shine on them. Who? Those prisoners who sit in darkness will have the light of who? This one shining on them to set them free. But who is this one? Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7. For to us a child is born. This is the great light that shines from Galilee of the nations. A child is born, then the Hebrew words are yelet yulad. I'll explain to you why that's important because David will then reiterate the points I made to make it clearer. Yelet yulad. Folks, don't forget these words. Yelet yulad. A child born who's a son given. A son will be born as a child and the government shall be on his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, El Gibor. Folks, don't take my words for it. This phrase, these words, El Gibor, used in Isaiah 10, 21, speaking of Yahweh, Jehovah, it says, a remnant shall return, a remnant will return to the mighty God, El Gibor. The child born is El Gibor, the mighty God. The mighty God being born as a baby, as a human child. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, David, connection with Jesse, the root of Jesse, who's the father of David, a child born who sits on David's throne. So the child who is born sits on David's throne. The only way you can sit on David's throne is if you're a descendant of David. But if you're a descendant of David, you're a descendant of Jesse. So the child is the root of Jesse. Are you making the connections? On the throne of David, over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it with justice. There's that servant, Isaiah 42, that will bring justice to the nations. And with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So the servant of Isaiah 42 is called Israel. He's the root of Jesse, sits on David's throne, meaning he's an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, a descendant of David. This servant will bring salvation to the nations. He's the light that shines in those who are in darkness. Well, that servant is the light that shines from Galilee of the nations, who is a child born to sit on David's throne, a child who's the mighty God in the flesh, God incarnate, the two natures of the Messiah. And what's the significance with the phrase child born? Yelet Yulad. According to Isaiah, God will be born. Yelet Yulad. But according to the Quran in chapter 112, verse 3, Allah says, He neither begets nor is begotten. So Isaiah condemns chapter 112, verse 3, and Muhammad as liars because Isaiah says his God will be born as a child to be the Messiah. There you go, David. So, Sam, our Muslim friends tell us Isaiah 42 is about Muhammad, peace be upon him. And... 
what are the odds that Abdullah here has ever in his entire life read the book of Isaiah? I would say very, very slim, like somewhere like a 0.000001% of a chance that he's ever read it. What you're saying is that if our Muslim friends would actually read the book of Isaiah and try to understand it, then when they read about the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, instead of thinking, oh, my apologist leader said that this is referring to Muhammad, therefore I should just believe it and mindlessly believe it and, and not try to understand the text at all. Instead of doing that, they might actually look at what the text is saying. And if they look at what the text is actually saying, Isaiah talks about this servant over and over and over again, using very frequently the same phrases showing that he's referring to the same servant. But when we put all of the passages together, we find that the servant is a descendant of Jesse and David. And it really sounds like he's giving messianic titles, but he's also the mighty God who's born into the world and, and, according to Isaiah 53, would die for the sins of others. This is why I said this is the gospel of John of the Old Testament. Amen. Right? And Muslims are going here. So what, 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 you're, what you're telling us, Sam, is that if Muslims, and remember, guys, I started by saying this. Before we ever went here, I started by saying that Muslims do not ever want us to go deep into a topic. That's why they constantly try to change the subject, right? Because when you, it's it's very easy to say, oh, right here, Song of Solomon 516, as soon as you start reading the passage, the, the whole argument falls apart and, and it becomes exposed as completely idiotic and ridiculous. Um, if you go to Deuteronomy 18, the moment you actually read the passage, the argument falls apart. If you go to Isaiah 42, it can sound good if a Muslim is talking to another Muslim and not to someone who's actually going to challenge him. Yep, Isaiah 42, it's a, it uses the word Kedar. There you have, icing on the cake, uses the word Kedar. Case closed, yeah. the case cracker. Yeah. There you have it. It uses the word Kedar. That means that it's talking about a prophet, uh, an Arab prophet. Uh, that's our argument, that's our case. And if you actually look at what the passage is saying, it's talking about a servant that Isaiah talks about over and over again, and who definitely, definitely was not a servant who could be Muhammad because he contradicts everything Muhammad taught. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. To add to, to the contradiction, folks, don't forget now what David said, I said, a child born who's the mighty God, a title used only for the true God. So God Almighty will become flesh be born as a human baby. That's what Christians believe. That's not what Muslims believe. But then you have an Isaiah 63, 16 and Isaiah 64, verse 8, where Isaiah says, Yahweh, the true God, is the father of his covenant people. You are our father. You made us, you redeemed us. Isaiah 63, 16, Isaiah 64, 8. Isaiah, is Yahweh your spiritual father? Yes. Are you his spiritual offspring? Yes. Not physical, not sexual, right? No. He's a spiritual being. He doesn't have sex. So guys, help me understand this. Isaiah's God is a spiritual father to his people. They are his spiritual children. Isaiah's God becomes born as a baby. The Messiah's God in the flesh, exalted to the throne of God the Father, dies for our sins. Muhammad says his God will never be born. His God is not a father. Messiah is not God in the flesh, and Messiah doesn't die for our sins. And yet Isaiah prophesied the coming of Muhammad. Surprise, David. Surprise. Uh, you know what's cool, Sam? Someone here said that, uh, uh, someone said over here in the chat that Fareed's video is seven minutes long. That's actually pretty oh, cool. That's, right? that's a respectable that's video. <laughs> Sam, Sam, you know, you know that what something I've noticed, something I've noticed is that when we start responding to, uh, to Muslims, they start making their videos longer and longer and longer to the point where who in the world's going to actually sit down and, and go through all of them, right? Like, like they try to. If you go through them, they don't answer you anywhere in the entire video. The argument, like they don't, the arguments don't get any better. They just add a bunch of a bunch of filler to them until you don't even want to watch it and don't don't want to respond to it. Uh, so anyway, if you made a seven minute video, then yes, Muslims again, we're giving Farid the option. We're giving Farid the option if he wants to be on here live with us tomorrow, eight o'clock p.m. Eastern time. He can. If not, we will go through his seven minute video and see what he's got. Um, yeah. All right, Sam, well, uh, the next one here, let, we'll have to read some super chats, but let me pull up the next one. Yeah. I don't know if this is a joke or not, because, I mean, it's funny because 
Notice, guys, anytime anyone posts any of the Muslim arguments, I'm wondering if someone's joking, right? Because that's how bad these arguments are. Yeah. But uh, Muhammad yeah. Sheikh here said Isaiah 29.12 is talking about Muhammad. Oh, Isaiah 29.12 is talking about Muhammad. So let's go ahead and save that for one second because that one's absolutely uh Yeah, absolutely you can hilarious. shred that with ease. Yeah, you can shred yeah, it I've with got, ease. Yeah, I've got the passage pulled up. That's pretty funny. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, haven't haven't uh, addressed the super chats yet. So let's go through some of these real quick. Uh, Catherine Schoonover said, "No need to read this out loud. Too late." Catherine she said, "This is from my mother. She wanted to support you too. Uh, tell your mother. Thank you, Catherine." Uh, the third apology said, "Hey, David. Not sure if you saw, but Menge made a video replying to you. I just uploaded a video decimating his remarks about Rebecca. I also want to want to." Uh, I also want to make a video about Isaac and Rebecca because it's one of the yeah. it's one of the biggest lies Disgusting. that Muslims yeah. uh, pass around, right? So in case uh, in case anyone's new here, when we bring up Muhammad and Aisha, Muslims will say, "But but I but Isaac married Rebecca when she was three. It's 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 a total lie. It's a total absolute complete lie. They have to yeah. completely massacre the text. And if you read about Rebecca, she's clearly not a three year old, right? Why do they say that? Because some of these guys have really really sick minds. They're they're perverts, man. Yeah. yeah. Perverts. I mean, think, why would they want to say, because keep in mind, this is, an, this is an attack not only on Isaac, but against Abraham. Abraham is the one who sent his, sent his servant to go get this girl, right? So if you're saying Abraham sent his servant to get a three-year-old bride, these are the, the and, here, and the point here is these, these are the same Muslims. We respect the prophets. They will not hesitate to call the prophets sick perverts and pedophiles in order to bring them down to the level of Muhammad. And they claim to respect them, but this is what this religion does. It, 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 they claim, oh, we respect and we honor the prophets and so on. As soon as you dig a little bit deeper, you find nonstop blasphemy in this religion. Um, all right, uh, Michael Marcos with the super sticker. John the Arminian yeah. said, how dare you guys say Muhammad isn't mentioned in the Bible? He is obviously mentioned in Matthew 7, 15, 1 John 4, 1. Matthew 24, 24, 2 Peter 2, 1, and especially 1 John 4, 1 through 6. So you guys can all check out those verses, but they have to deal with uh, false prophets. Yep. Um, to Amato with the super sticker, Antonio Castro and uh, Henrique um, didn't leave a comment. Sophia Films says, Memo, Muslims, Momo is dead, Jesus is still alive. That's true. Susan Applegate says, You enlighten the world. Thank you for your light and wisdom. Bless you and your family. Uh, Donnie Tesfu says, God bless you both. Sophia Film says, uh, Imam Sajid Lipham made a vid on you. Well, that's cool. Notice, it seems like a lots of Muslims are making uh, video responses, and that's, uh, that's good. It seems like they're getting a little worried about this. But if it's actually on the topic that we're addressing, we might, uh, we might, might actually go through that one as well. Jeremy Sim, uh, Simiu with the super sticker. Stunner 900 said he's in the Song of Solomon, so he's in a he's in Jewish erotica, right? So that's what they're that and that's the problem. That's what Muslims would call it, but that's where they're claiming that that Muhammad. I mean, I, I mean, if you think about it, if Muhammad, if Muhammad, who is like the most sex obsessed guy in the history of humanity, I mean, he would have sex with all nine or eleven wives in a single night. Uh, if Muhammad were going to be anywhere in the Bible, it would probably be in the Song of Solomon. He's just, he's, he's not, right? He's just not there. Yep. Um, uh, Muhammad Ibn Shaitan says, can Somali Christian TV get a shout out, please? Yes, I saw a couple people say that Somali, uh, Somali Christian TV was in there. In Amen. fact, Somali Christian TV, uh, Sam, see if you see, uh, see if they're still here. Get a comment and go ahead and read out any yeah. uh, Somali Christian TV. Why don't you tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and Sam will go ahead and read it. Yeah, I'm looking for it. So please shows up. Yeah, God bless you guys. Somali Christian TV. May the Lord Jesus preserve you, bless you, and prosper you for His glory. I'm happy there's a Somali Christian television station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, John. Uh, John Cass says, uh, "Give Farid, re give Farid response a Menj experience." Yeah, for the people who are pointing out uh, Menj. Responding to Menj was just kind of fun, right? So there are times when you want to give serious responses, and there are times when you know you just you don't want to, you know, you don't want to think too deeply. You're just trying to make a fun video. And uh, fortunately, Menge will be good for that. I, I, I will probably here in the next couple of days make another response to Menge because he was uh, he was laughing at the idea that we think that Muhammad died from poisoning. 
Like, huh, show us, show us poison that could that could kill you years later. Guys, ev of course you can. Ask any doctor. Can you, can you consume poison that doesn't kill you, but it damages you internally and then kills you years later because of, you know, repeated infections and so on? Any doctor will say, of course. Of course, that actually happens. That sort of thing happens, right? Um, but the, the, the funny part is, Mange thinks this idea is completely idiotic and that, and that w w you'd have to be a, a complete liar to think that this is a good argument. It comes from his prophet. His prophet's the one who said, I'm dying of this poison that I took three years earlier. It's his prophet who's saying it. So he's calling his prophet a lying moron. And so, you know, th that's what I mean when it doesn't, there's no research required. I just play the clip of what Fareed says. I, I put the, the hadiths up on the screen that say this is what Muhammad said he was dying of. And you title the video, Muslim Apologist Claims Muhammad Was a Lying Moron. And that's yeah. it. And then people watch it and they laugh at it. It's not a ton of research, but, uh, you know, some of those videos are just, uh, just fun to make. Um, Choose Jesus said, your testimony in the subway helped me when I was agnostic. Thank you, sir. Yes. Oh, by the way, What's up? he's a Syrian, an Assyrian brother in Jesus Christ. Hater. Just Who? Want to say that. Who's a Syrian? Choose Jesus. Oh, Jews, yeah? Choose Jesus. Yeah. Oh, well, now I don't like him anymore. <laughs> exactly. I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ride Everest says, Rid Everest says, um, expose Islam, love Muslims. The love of Christ triumphs over anything and everyone. Uh, whosoever believes will be saved. Jesus lived, died, rose again, ascended to heaven, and will come again to judge. Stunner 900 says he wears women's clothing and runs around in bars. So that's, uh, uh, oh, I never thought about making that video. That gives me an idea. He's quoting the Monty Python um, lumberjack song, uh, where there's a line where he goes, I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. And, uh, <laughs> He's applying it to Muhammad there, so that would actually be fun to rewrite the song a little bit about a prophet. See, guys, you know, a lot of my ideas I come up with myself, but uh, other ideas I get from uh, other people, so that could actually be a fun little, fun little song. Angelique News said, Many blessings to both of you, brothers, and your families. Jesus is Lord. Um, and, all right, I think I, got, I think I got through the ones that were yeah. up when I... Uh, uh, pulled them up a few minutes ago. Sam, did we hear anything from uh, Somali Christian TV? Nothing. Or? Okay. Someone said that they know them. They're trying to contact you. I guess they want to get you on their station, but he'll let them know. Nothing from them. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah that shouldn't be a problem. All right. All right, Sam. Well, should we go yeah. into... Sure. I mean, knock it out of the park, man. You've done it. Uh, nice day in 29, 12, bro. Good. See I, don't, I mean, gosh, you can start at verse 1 and see what it's talking about, or you can just, you know, yeah. we can just go to... Guys, do you understand how a lot of these passages that Muslims say go to, they, they, they either end up claiming that Muhammad is God or they go to a passage where Muhammad is completely ruled out as a prophet if they're saying that it refers to Muhammad, right? So, for instance, when, when Muslims go to Deuteronomy 33 and say this is Muhammad, well, they just said that Muhammad is, is God, is the God of Scripture, right? And they've deified him. They do that over and over again, right? Um, when Muslims go to Deuteronomy 18 and they say, here, this is about Muhammad. Well, Deuteronomy 18.20 completely rules out Muhammad as a prophet. He can't possibly be a prophet. In, in, instead, he would have been sentenced to death by Moses if Moses had been around when, yes. Muhammad was, when Muhammad was speaking. And we get to Isaiah chapter 13, I mean, uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 29. And here's what's amazing. If you read it, then if Muslims want to say this is talking about Muhammad, great, I say. But this really, really shows, this really shows the level of deception. Again, uh, I don't know if Muhammad Sheikh was serious when he posted this. A lot of people want to post these as a joke. But this is one of the most popular so-called Muslim, uh, so-called prophecies about Muhammad in the Bible. So let's go ahead and take a gander at this one. And here we go. All right. So above this, before we get up here, Isaiah is given a vision about the coming judgment that's coming, right? So this coming judgment is 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 being prophesied by Isaiah. And then we get down. We get down to the passage that Muslims want to go to. And the vision of all this, starting at verse 11, and the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it, to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who 
cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read, right? Now, what do Muslims do? What do Muslim apologists do? What does, is, what is, you know, someone like Zakir Naik do? They go to verse 12. They don't show anything that this chapter is actually talking about. And they say, look at this, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 12. And when they give the book, uh-oh, this is talking about a book being given to someone. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. So everyone knows, I can't read. That's right? So look at this, right? So according to Islam, the angel Gabriel appeared to Muhammad, started roughing him up, telling him to read. And Muhammad says, I can't read. But here you have, and when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. Clearly, this is talking about the prophethood of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? That's what, that's what you're telling us, right? Now, now, again, go back. If you look at what this chapter is actually saying, it's, God is pronouncing judgment against you and they don't want to accept it and they make excuses for why they will not accept the message. They, are, they refuse to accept the message about all of the death that is coming upon them, right? And so it says, and the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed, right? When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot for it is sealed. He makes an excuse. You could obviously open it up and read it, right? But if you give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read, right? In other words, no matter what the situation is, whether you can read or whether you can't read, you make an excuse for why you refuse to accept the prophecy of Isaiah. What do Muslims say? They rip all of this out of context, completely destroy and massacre the context. Go to verse 12 and pretend like this is talking about a prophet. They pretend like this is talking. Where does this say this is talking about a prophet? These are, this, is, this is talking about people who are in rebellion against God and who refuse to listen to his prophets. These are people who refuse to accept the words of God's prophets. This is not an angel coming to a man who's a prophet. This, this is the revelation of a prophet coming to people who refuse to accept it. And so they make excuses. No, I can't read that. It's sealed. No, I can't read that. I can't read. All right. So that's what Muslims are telling us Muhammad is. I say, great. Amen. So according to Muslims, Muhammad was a man who stubbornly rebelled against the revelations of the one true God. He was indeed. So if they want to apply this, then yeah. great. And we can always yeah. we can always read a little farther as well. Yeah. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord, your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us, who knows? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay? Notice, this is all words of judgment because people refuse to take God's warning, right? Exactly. And the exactly. warning has been given to them by the prophet Isaiah. And the response is, if you give them the revelation, they make excuses for why they're not going to accept it. And Muslims say, yep, this person who refuses to accept the words of God's revelation, that's Muhammad. That's how desperate they are. <clears throat> and notice, this is the sort of argument that gullible people fall for. They don't actually read the passage. They don't read the chapter. They definitely don't read the book of Isaiah. They just hear someone like Zachar Naik say, oh, Muhammad's mentioned in Isaiah 29, 12. And they go, oh, wow, it does say that the book is given to someone who can't read. And he says, I can't read. Oh my goodness, that has to refer to Muhammad. They don't read the passage where it's condemning this person for rejecting the revelation. And they 100%. say, that, that's Muhammad. That's Muhammad. <clears throat> yeah. Well, great. The great. The Muhammad's not a true prophet. This, this isn't talking about a prophet. This is talking about someone who rejects God's prophets. So when Muslims yeah. say this is about Muhammad, they just said, our prophet is a false prophet who stubbornly resists the true revelations of God. And to that I say, amen. Amen. Just to add one thing for the benefit of the Christians here, even the Muslims, you read Isaiah 29, 13. Guys, let me just read Isaiah 29, 13 one more time. And the Lord said, <clears throat> pay attention to what Isaiah says. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and pay attention to the last line. And their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. So they're not teaching God's words. They're erecting traditions of men and imposing it on the people. The reason why I'm emphasizing this is because Jesus quoted Isaiah 29, 13 against the religious hypocrites who are imposing traditions on men not found in Scripture and condemning them 
for not living up to those traditions. Here, Matthew 15, verses 7 to 9. To confirm what David is saying, Jesus is saying this chapter is a word of condemnation <clears throat> to the Jews who are stiff-necked and rebellious and refuse to submit to God's word, but holding to traditions that contradict God's word. Here's what the word says. Matthew 15, verses 7 to 9. You hypocrites, <clears throat> well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Someone should have said, but Lord, the verse before is talking about an illiterate prophet to come. Why are you applying it as a word of judgment against the stiff-necked Jews who refuse to submit to God and accept you in spite of all the wonders you're doing? It's about an heir prophet. Lord, we love you, but it's about Muhammad. Finally, just one more point. What well, one second? I just wanted to point out that uh, um, oh, I think I lost the comment, but uh, hopefully you find so, it. Someone said someone said uh, about reading verse thirteen that this would actually mean that Sharia is man-made, right? Because it says, Amen. It says so. Notice Muslims, you say verse twelve is talking about Muhammad, and then God condemns condemns them in verse thirteen and says, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men exactly so, so they uh -huh. they teach they teach the commandments uh of men rather than <clears throat> the commandments of god and so if if this person in verse 12 is teaching the commandments of men then great muhammad taught sharia so sharia is man-made and so muhammad's a false prophet who stubbornly rebelled against the revelations of the one true god and taught man-made laws and that's 100%. what we get if we take the the Muslim claim seriously. All right, go ahead, Sam. Yeah. Final points, because we want the Christians to be thoroughly equipped by the power of the Holy Spirit to expose Islam for the glory of Jesus. Now, notice they'll go to 12 and say, <clears throat> this is speaking of Muhammad, because what did 12 say? Let's read it one more time. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. That's what Muhammad said. But folks, just like in Song of Songs 516, if they're going to be con consistent that means Isaiah's prophesying two prophets to come. Because notice what 11 says. <clears throat> and the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. So if verse 12 is talking about a prophet who's illiterate, then verse 11 is talking about a prophet who's literate, can read, but the book is sealed. So again, Muslims, you prove too much. Like in Song of Solomon 5.16, you said Mahmadim is Muhammad, then Mamtaqim is a prophet named Mamtaq. So now we're waiting for, folks, look how hilarious this is. When we take Song of Solomon and Isaiah 29, that means Muslims, a prophet will come named Mamtaq, who is literate, but he'll be given a sealed book that he can't read because it's sealed and he needs Jibreel, Alayhi salam, Gabriel, to open it for him. So Muslims, Muhammad is not the final prophet. Be prepared. Mumtaq is about to show up. Alayhi salam. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam upon Mumtaq. And finally, don't forget the point. Isaiah says, Yahweh is a spiritual father to his people. Isaiah says, the mighty God, a name of Yahweh, will be born as a child. He'll be a God child, a God man. That's the Messiah who sits on God's throne. Isaiah said that same God child will be a light of salvation who dies on the cross for the sins of people, all of which Muhammad contradicts. And you still want us to believe Isaiah prophesied such a false prophet who contradicts his theology? I'm ready to take Shahada. Surprise, Surprise. David. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, notice we've been going through. And, and <laughs> here, here we go, Sam. Ready? Again, another shocker? No, 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 from Nero Dan. Nero Dan said, stop talking to your friend and talk with Muslim people in live. Not just comments, but in person to correct every wrong word you say. Sam, how many times? How many yeah. times have we invited guys on with us? How many times have we, how many times did we invite Adnan Rashid on? How many times have exactly. we said that Farid can come on tomorrow if he wants to? And what's the, and they don't want to come on here. They never do. We invite them, they never come, and then Muslims, oh, why are, why are you just talking to each other and don't bring on the Muslim, our Muslim apologists? Oh, boy. Yeah, in fact, even earlier, one said, hey, hey, why don't you challenge Farid to a debate if you're not afraid? I thought we just did. That's what one Muslim just said a few minutes Sam, ago. Sam, do you hereby agree to debate Farid on whether Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible? 
Most definitely, by the grace of Jesus, let's do it tomorrow if you can, or anytime. Ready, willing, and able. Please tell him Sam is begging you. Sam wants you to whoop him. Put him in his place. Please, Farida, put me in my place. Please. I need a good, you know, butt whooping. Anyway, yeah. All right. Let's so, yeah, I don't know what to do, man. I don't know what to do. Guys, think about the, the, the level of thinking, the critical thinking ability we have here, where we can sit here and say 50 times during a live stream, Hey, he's welcome to come on. And the response is, well, why won't you let him come on? Oh, man. Uh, but that, that's, I guess that's exactly what we would expect from people who go to all these passages of the Bible that can't possibly be referring to Muhammad. And if they were referring to Muhammad, like in Isaiah, it would mean that he's a false prophet because it's condemning the person. I guess if, if those are the kinds of people you go to, wow. Um, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we'll be wrapping up here. Uh, I'll probably yep. read a couple more super chats, but any final, final point, Muslims? Uh, I, I don't know what I don't know what Farid used in his video, but is there anything else, or did you give us the best of the best there? Yeah, yeah. And and M what? Muslim Muslims, I I just want to say, I just want to say, think about that. All we had to do for these passages was actually read the passages. And you saw how completely ridiculous it is to think that this is about Muhammad. And if you take it, if you take these passages seriously, they quite often end up showing that Muhammad was a false prophet. And this is the best you've been able to come up with after 14 centuries of searching. This is your best. And you expect us to take your religion seriously when it lays down as one of its main lines of evidence that Muhammad is mentioned in our Bible. We go to our Bible and Muhammad's followers, after having 14 centuries to show where he's mentioned, they go to a bunch of passages that either make him God or they make him a false prophet. And, and, that, and, and that's I'm where sure. you, so you're either deifying him or you're, you're calling him a deceiver. And these are yep. the best you've got. Go ahead, Sam. No, it just was funny. I know the man meant in a jest. He was a Christian. He goes, come on, David. Muhammad is prophesied in John 3.16. You understand this point, right? You can you can take anything and twist it. John three sixteen prophesied Muhammad. David, come on, surprise. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Joe Chris nineteen seventy two said they have as much depth of thinking as their prophet. Yeah, it's yeah. nothing. It is. I mean, it's it's a sad situation, but I mean, it's it's this is the this is the impact that Islam has on people. Notice it forces you. It forces you. If you really believe that Muhammad's a prophet and he says that he's mentioned in the Bible, you have to go there, right? You have to go to the Bible to confirm Muhammad. Well, what do you go there and you find that Muhammad's a false prophet according to your book? No problem. Just go to a bunch of other passages that either make God, Muhammad God or make him a false prophet and, and completely ignore the context and lie about what's in there. And you see, there we have it. Great. Welcome to Islam. This is the proof of our religion. How do you, I don't see how... Sam, if I were raised as a Muslim, if I grew up as a Muslim, yeah. And I looked at my book and my book is appealing to this other book as proof that it's from God. And I went to the book and the book said, don't believe that guy. He's a deceiver and a false prophet. Yeah. And then the best passages that my greatest apologists have been, been able to come up with over the centuries are either passages that make him God, that would make my prophet God, or would make him a false prophet. I would be out of that religion. And somehow they just keep on defending it, even if you put it right in front of their faces. How is this not yeah. utterly demonic? You people? said it. 100%. It's spiritual warfare. Satan is real. Demons are real. And they're trying to blind people. But remember, Jesus Christ is almighty. And he is all powerful over Satan. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, Muslims are seeing it. They are leaving in droves. And in Jesus' name, we'll be the generation to see millions and millions of muslims leaving muhammad and falling in love with jesus by the power of the holy spirit by the grace of the son of god it's happening because christ is almighty over satan in jesus name it's happening we're seeing it you know um all right well i'm looking through the comments here yeah no one's bringing up all they're saying is like Khalid, please read the quran with an open heart we have that's why we'll never accept muhammad uh, david you're a liar and and farid schooled you and you're scared that's all you're that's all we're getting we're getting no challenges from anybody. Hey, look at this. What is this? Farid. <laughs> look at this. The one says Farid debunked him and David refused to respond and called it a trap. See? What in the You're world are these people talking about? I'm one, you, I had no idea he made a video until people said here during this live stream that he made a video. 
He's yeah. saying he debunked me, but Muslims brought his arguments. We go through the arguments and they're completely ridiculous. We invite him on and we say, we'll go through the video. And the response is, Fareed rebunked him and David refused to respond and called it a trap. What is this religion, man? What Demonization. Is what does it do? By the blood of Jesus, may they be set free by the blood of Jesus, the blood of his cross. Demonization, obviously. Whatever it is, it's pretty, pretty darn bad. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, check out a couple of super chats and then we'll uh, head out because I have another video to record. Alrighty. And God willing, tomorrow we're going to decimate Fareed's lies by the grace of Jesus Christ. God willing, tomorrow. And Fareed can be here, can be here live with us to defend his points and defend his prophet. Keep, keep, in, keep in mind, Muslims, notice, we gave you guys all the, we gave you two hours to come up with a single prophecy of Muhammad, and you didn't come up with one. You couldn't come up with one. But Muhammad said, Muhammad said, Muhammad said that he's in there, and you can't show us where. So you got a problem there. Uh, Tatiana J said, short video on Rebecca's marriage would be so helpful. Comes up all the time by Muslims. Yep. Yeah, Tatiana, I'm thinking I might have to make a short one and a long video because you kind of need a longer video to go through the passage and, and show uh, through the narrative that this is clearly talking about, this is clearly not talking about a three-year-old girl. Um, but yeah, short a short video would be helpful in terms of uh, people sharing it. But yeah, it is really helpful in exposing how even Muslim apologists are happy to lie and accuse biblical figures of being absolute pedophiles, not based on, hey, here's proof that this person in the Bible is a pedophile, but lying about the person and then accusing him of pedophilia based on the lie. And they feel justified in this because they've got a prophet who had sex with a prepubescent girl, and we expose him for that, and they've got nothing to say in response, so they have to lie. And uh, this is more fruit of Islam. Yeah. Uh, Len Len, super sticker. Uh, Kevin said, David and Sam, you two have been instrumental in affirming my faith. Um, Atsu Amato said, where can I get one? But he's responding, oh, okay, he's responding to Nag uh, Nagmana. Nagmana said, uh, have the Holy Bible in my Aboriginal language, while Piri in the Northern Territory, Australia, how amazing God is. Yeah, so that's in a uh, Aboriginal language. Uh, Abraham said, dear Muslims, Allah is a father to none. Meanwhile, Muslims... Uh, by the miracle of reinterpretation to the miracle of trespassing, they are able to um, find their prophet prophesied in a book where God is father. Yeah. yeah so you guys catch exactly. the point. According to yeah, the Quran, the Allah is a father to no one in no sense. According to the Bible, God is a father to the nation of Israel, to Christians. He's a father in different ways, but he's clearly God the father. And Muslims are going to a book where God, Old Testament, New Testament, is our father in heaven in order to confirm a prophet who said that God is a father to no one. It's just a problem. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, Consistent. Mar Marilyn Murphy said, give him the holy Hadouken. Hadouken. Apple Go and Jason Lippert with the uh, super stickers. And Isaac Cruz says, God bless you both. All right. Um, and Jeremy Those said, all the Jeremy Go said, ahead. David, you should discuss about Miriam, sister to Moses, whom Muslims claim to be the mother of Jesus in the Quran, confused her with Mary of the Bible. That's actually one of the early videos I make. If you look, it's called Quran error number one or Quran error number two or something like that. Uh, but probably like 10 or 11 years ago when I made that video. But uh, yeah, it might be one of the topics worth uh, bringing up again. All right. Well, it's 9.53. Any final thoughts, Sam? Before we close out, I just have to read this last comment and obviously pray for me, David, our families, my daughters, his wife and children. Pray Jesus protects us, keeps us healthy for his glory, holy to glorify him and provide for our needs. But here I just got ended with this. Be which prophet of Islam 2252 because he makes an excellent point. He goes, Acts 17 apologetic Shimonian. David and Sam are in front of the screen and the Muslims don't want to debate. But Christian princes behind the screen, the screen. They want him to come in front of the screen to debate him. Amazing. You see the lies? Their yeah. excuse with Christian Prince is, no, you got to show your face. Okay, well, we're showing our face and you still don't debate us. Hello, Christ is risen, risen indeed. He's the son of God, our Savior. We love you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, a couple more comments here. Liger System says, uh, uh, Muslims claim all the time that Allah is not all powerful. Arlen 3 said, I'm having an argument about how to talk to Muslims. He does not like your style. I do like your style. Keep up the good work. Yes, my style is awesome. 
Michelle Marie said, didn't you realize that the prophet of Islam was referred to as Judas Iscariot in the Gospels? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the point. If, if you want to just put Muhammad in anywhere, why not call him, why not call him Judas or something like that? Um, Hindu historian said, David, do you know how to obtain a copy of The Prince and the Prophet by Ravi Zacharias? Keyboard jihadis seem to have gotten it removed from everywhere online. Uh, no, do not know how to get a copy of that. Wow, I didn't know he had a book on The Prince and the Prophet. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, and Chanel Rike said, David, why Muslims say that Allah is correcting his own holy books because the books of Allah sent to Moses and Isa are corrupted? Um, yeah, so it, uh, th that's a problem that we bring up. Namely, Allah doesn't say he's correcting the older books. He says he's confirming the older books and that they affirm his book and he affirms those books. And that's what we call the Islamic dilemma. Because there are two possibilities. Either we have the word of God or we don't have the word of God. If we have the word of God, then Islam is false because it contradicts our book. <laughs> if we don't have the word of God, Islam is false because the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our book. Muslims have to say our book's been corrupted because they know that our book doesn't line up with their book. So they have to say it's been corrupted, but their God doesn't say that. And so now they have to distort what their God says and thus show that they are not people who submit to God, but those who correct their God. And so Allah is the one who gets constantly corrected by his Muslim followers who do not submit to him, but forces him to submit to them. All right, everyone, I'm going out now because i uh, got a video to record, but we will be back tomorrow. I'm sure all the Muslims are running to Fareed right now and telling him, ah, be our champion, go on the program. And he can, he can come on here and we'll continue discussing this topic of Muhammad and the Bible, and Fareed can bring forth his greatest arguments. And other than that, if not, we'll go through some video responses by Muslims, who, and we'll see how desperate they are. All right. Catch everyone later. Christ by the way, yeah, links to Sam's uh, channel, links to Sam's channel and Patreon are in the description box. So follow him, because keep in mind, Sam goes live more than I do. I post short videos, but Sam goes live a lot. So if you want in-depth de discussion of Christian theology, you can uh, follow Sam. Just be careful because he does have a quick, <laughs> he does have a quick block finger. Don't worry. I'm working on that by the grace of Jesus. Become more like Christ. He's worthy and we love you, Lord Jesus. God bless you guys. Catch you all tomorrow. All right.